Well, we would play, you know, on the school ground, and the, the fourth graders and the fifth graders would more or less play together. Mm -hmm. And I can, uh, you know, barely remember playing the fourth graders. I remember there was Jim sitting and uh, Bill Midkiff. They were the main two fourth graders because they were bigger than most of the fourth graders. They were about as big as we were. Mm -hmm. So I guess in actuality, about the fifth grade is when I first played with Jim. Kind of my first memories were uh, uh, about our seventh grade year when we actually got into organized football and started playing organized football. Eighth grade year, we had a pretty nice little team. And uh, I just remember uh, Jim being a, a good football player. And uh, then from there on, it kind of grew over the years. I remember in eighth grade that we played uh, one of the junior highs in Abilene. Uh, that's how good they were. They were really good. We had great talent. Uh, Jim was one of them. We had two or three others who were good too, but Jim was the best. We were the Cisco Midgets. <laughs> that was the name of our team. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Mighty Midgets. And I don't think, I've asked some other boys if they remember, and they don't ever remember us those three years I was in junior high losing a game. Hmm. And when I went to be a freshman, Jim and Bill Midkey from the Elmer Escobedo, a uh, Mexican boy, boy, they were the three main players, Jim and Bill on the line and on defense, and then Elmer Escobedo was real fast. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they lost a game either. So I don't think there for about four years in a row that any of our Cisco midgets ever lost a game. As a freshman, he started at, at a linebacker spot when he was a freshman. And Jim was a freshman. Now this is what was unusual. No freshman hardly ever got to play on the A-team. But Jim made the A-team and uh, Bill Midkiff, those two. He called this one old boy, I won't call his name because I never did like him. He was a bully and he was a smart aleck, but he's a good football player and he was a senior. Let's call him Don Smith if you want to. He said, Smith, how many tackles did you make this first half? He said, well, sir, I don't guess I made any. He wasn't quite so cocky now. He said, that's right, you never made a tackle. You're going to sit on the bench and you're going to watch the rest of this game. Jim sitting, <laughs> you're going to start as linebacker this second half. And he did. And he started, you know, kind of telling him, well, you watch this and you watch that. And Jim played that whole second half. And I have said that's probably the only, I don't know now about the later years, but I know those early years, probably the only important playoff game playing the state champion that our Cisco High School had a freshman starting as a linebacker. Mm -hmm. But that's how much confidence he had in him and he was just a freshman. And he went in for that old boy. And uh, that old boy, he, he never went back in the game. <laughs> and a freshman beat him out. A freshman beat him out and Jim made some tackles too that second half. And Jim was just a freshman. and. Uh, Probably didn't think he had much chance of playing because he come up a freshman and he was a good husky belt kid, but he didn't weigh but about 160 then, and so that was a little a little light. But uh, you know we didn't know that much about him. You did good in junior high, but came up we weren't expecting a whole lot. But uh, we had a real pleasant surprise because uh, he played a lot of a lot of ball that year. In our sophomore years, when we played Stanford and got beat, we played hard and got beat. Jim was a sophomore and he started. That when you when you're a sophomore and you're a starter for a championship team, that says a lot. But Jim beat some seniors out, and he started instead of some seniors, and he started on defense as a linebacker. And that year. I'm almost positive. I know when I was a senior, he got the trophy for the most tackles of the year. And I believe he did when he was a sophomore. Okay, here this sophomore is, 15 year old kid, you know. He not only makes the first team, 
that he gets the most tackles of anybody on the team for the year. My name's Dwayne Hale, and uh, I'm here in Cisco, Texas, uh, the center of the earth. And I'm in the Lila Latch Lloyd Museum, and we have what's called here a alumni room. I have a lot of the memorabilia from the football and different sports, going back to the so-called big damn lobos of the 20s. And that kind of put Cisco on the map, you might say. And uh, the next winning teams that we had, uh, Jim Sitton was part of our team in 59, and I say a big part of the team. He's one of our starting guards. Most of our players were seniors that year that started, and we, we won 11 games and lost one. And uh, my specific memories of Jim was he was a very uh, steady player and a very stout player, and, and uh, he played guard, and I played fullback, and uh, we ran what was called a 36X and a 30X, and it was a trap block. We had two great guards, and Jim was one of them, and they always cleared the hole out. And unfortunately, as you know, if he watched any football, the linemen don't get much credit. And I don't think a back ever made a yard without, uh, without uh, good linemen. And I personally want to thank Jim for clearing the hole out. I got a college scholarship out of that, and of course, I went ahead and graduated and I was playing college ball and didn't get to see him play at SMU or I didn't get to see him play the last two years for the Lobos, but I know he made All-State two years, he made All-American, and they call him Hittin' Sittin'. So he's kind of left his legacy here in Cisco. Uh, everybody that was from that time period, the 10 years one way or the other, knows the name Jim Sittin'. We went on through our senior year uh, it became apparent that he was a, a, a really a good football player, and uh, he uh, his senior year, and I don't know if y'all know this or not, but he made a little All-American as his, in his senior year, and then of course he went on and played in the uh, was it the oil belt bowl, the little oil belt bowl? Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was, but anyway, after his senior year, before he went to SMU, so yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we played together and knew he was a good player and a hard nosed player. We were in a senior civics class, and we were seniors in the springtime, and uh, that's when they really recruit football players, and everybody thought he'd go to the team because his daddy had connection there, mm -hmm. but he came into my he and I sat together, even in, even in government. He said that by me, and I said, well, what we're going to do? Tell him to go to SMU. And I probably was the first person to do that. Well, because he was he was stronger and meaner than the rest of them. <laughs> I, I'll tell you a story about that. Now, meaner, he wasn't a bully now, was he? No, he wasn't a bully. He was just tough. One time, about that time, uh, <laughs> I had a girlfriend. We all had girlfriends, but I had a girlfriend, and, and I had a... There's a guy that's giving me a lot of trouble about it. And so I said, well, I'm going to meet you at a certain point. We're going to have a little discussion about who this girlfriend's going to belong to. So I had Jim and Billy Duff down the street here. And they all were giving me, you know, pointers on boxing, which I was not a boxer. I was so skinny, couldn't hurt. And old Duff told me, he said, no, you hit him the hardest you can the first time. We're going to get this over with. And Jim was with me. Well, we all went over and had this little fight. It didn't last but three or four blows. But uh, we ran that guy off. <laughs> but that's the kind of friend he was. He's always there when I needed him. <laughs> so I never had to worry about having a, somebody protect me. He always took care of me. And like I say, you know, uh, it was kind of good to have a friend like that. <laughs> bigger than everybody else. Because he was consistent, because he, he played without any fear. Uh, there's a lot of good athletes but I'm telling you, it takes a lot of nerve sometimes in football to go ahead and you just, like you're sacrificing your body. You got this big old boy who weighs 200 pounds coming at you about 20 miles an hour, like a freight train. Are you going <laughs> to go down or maybe get out of the way and try to grab him around the back or are you going to hit him head on? And it takes nerve. The gym had that nerve. He had that nerve to do that. And that coach knew it. Yeah, he had real instinct to play football. I mean, he really knew how to play. And he put his heart and soul into it. And he didn't, he didn't, 
He didn't brag or say that he was better than anybody else. He just played football. He was just consistent. You could always depend on him. He followed the play. He knew how to do that as a linebacker. I took care of the football team for three years there. And that included Jim most of the time. I used to go over on Saturday morning and put him in the whirlpool so I could get, <laughs> get him back in shape for Monday because he got beat up all over. But the last play of the game, they were going to pass. And old Jim blitzed, what we call blitzed or red dog. And he creamed that quarterback so bad they had to carry him off the field. And it was the last play of the game. <laughs> I mean, he left his mark on him. <laughs> I have a son, Mitchell. He's 12, and he's, um, he's little for his age, but he's got the biggest heart out there on the field. His granddaddy had a big heart, too. And, uh, never quit, never quit trying to win. Now, one thing else I'm going to say about Jim. When I got in high school, I weighed 130 pounds, and uh, there's some of these old boys who weighed 200, 180 or so. And a lot of, unfortunately, some of your football players, they're stout and pretty mean and aggressive, and they're bullies. And we had, especially one old boy, Judy would know every one of them if I called their names, but I'm not. But when we'd take a shower after practice or anything, especially this one old boy, he weighed 200 and us freshmen, he'd come in there. And a lot of times you had to wait for the shower. You know, you couldn't just go in. There wasn't enough showers. There's more boys than there was showers. He'd just come in and he'd just grab any one of us and throw us out of the shower. And he'd take his shower. He never waited. And I wanted to fight him so bad that I was always afraid to. Because he was so much bigger, I knew I'd be plastered. And I, I always really despised bullies. We had two or three like that. He was one of the worst. And uh, what I was going to say about Jim, and uh, he never was a bully. He was stout, he was big, he was aggressive, he played aggressive football. And I never knew him uh, ever picking on or bullying anybody. And I always respected him for that. Because he could have, I mean, he was big enough to. And that's what some of them did. You know, the coach that we had at that time was real bad about cursing. He cursed all the time and hard and screamed. And he was not the best gentleman to be around in the world, but he also had power. And if you didn't do what he said, he'd beat you with paddle. And so for some reason, I got beat pretty often. For I don't never know why. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. I just got beat with a paddle. So one day, that came up. He said, I'm going to beat you over with that paddle. And Jim got up and said, no, you're not beating me anymore. He said, you beat him for the last time I'll ever beat him. And that's the last time I ever got a lick. Because I hadn't done anything. And Jim knew it. He said, you're not touching Odom again. Just forget it. And one other thing I was going to say. When I was a senior, uh, you know, I said Jim had made the most tackles when he the year before. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was a senior, he was going to be a junior. Well, we all, a lot of us, read in the summertime this Texas football magazine had come out. And that's when you'd get your name in a magazine, you know. Uh, our team, uh, they would usually print something about us because we'd had these two winning teams. But it came out, and Jim Sitton was picked to make the All State team that year and the Super All State team when he was a junior and I was a senior. Now he was the only one on our team that was picked to do that. They pick them before the season starts, that's their projections. Hmm. Well, we were on a bus one time, <coughs> I just figured everybody knew that. And I was talking to this other boy on the team, and I said, well, you know, we have an all-state, a super all-state player on our team. No. I said, yeah. He said, well, who is it? And I said, it's Jim Sidney. Huh? And the point is, Jim didn't broadcast what he was. He never went around bragging about all these accolades that he got, and that boy never even knew it. The thing about Jim, every coach would love to have players all like him. He was always pleasant, always had a smile. It was a yes sir, no sir. So, you know, that was impressive. 
Well, what surprised me that Jim wasn't, didn't show any aggression at all. You'd thought he was a nice Sunday school boy that would fuss or do anything, which he, he didn't have a big mouth on him. <laughs> so uh, he, was, he was very quiet and unassuming. But something about when he got on that uh, football field is a different story. So uh, he would come completely unwound when he'd block or tackle. And there's not many kids had that, but there's a, a burst that a football player has on contact that some people have that some don't. So uh, that's really Jim was playing as a freshman. He had that, and uh, but he never had any attitude that uh, you know he was mean or wanted to get at someone. That was just him playing football. When we got to be seniors, we lost a lot of football players either to health or transfer. And we were only mediocre team, and we weren't as good as we were originally. And we had to make a couple of extra yards one time, and so uh, Coach, so Jim said, well, I'll tell you what, just give me the ball and I get the extra yards. And so I remember that doing that, giving, giving him the ball and made the extra yards. You know, when the, I'll come back the next year, I had this opportunity to try something else. And uh, of course I told Jim, I said, I sure, you're one reason I really hate to leave because I know, you know, I'd be coaching all state line.